Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We want to get started here. I see that we're still filling up with participants, and we're so happy that you could join us for this premiere of Opening Doors to College. Um, Dan, if you could advance to the next slide, we'll uh, move right along here. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, share with you that we will have captions on for our film today. And um, uh, for opening doors to college, we'll provide captions during the film and also during the discussion portion of our webinar. Um, if you could turn on the captions, um, sorry, my chat just went up there. Turn on the captions during the webinar, click close caption at the bottom in your meeting controls and choose either show subtitles or view full transcript to select the view that works best for you. Um, I neglected to tell you who I am. Um, I'm Amarie Lakata and I have the privilege um, to um, direct the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium, which was developed um, through the acquisition of a um, transition and post-secondary programs for students with intellectual disability grant in 2015 that Millersville uh, University received. Um, our consortium has 29 colleges and universities that are aligning themselves with uh, full inclusion and um, we have about 14 programs now that are operational. Um, and today is all about um, opening doors to college. Um, at this time, I'm going to um, turn it over to our uh, provost, um, Dr. Vilas Prabhu. And um, Dan, if we can advance to the next slide, let me share with you a little bit about Dr. Prabhu, who is certainly a champion for us at Millersville University. Um, he is the provost and vice president for academic affairs. Um, and has just really uh, been such a main supporter since the beginning of not only the consortium, but integrated studies, the program at Millersville University. So um, Dr. Prabhu, if I could ask you to um, share a few words with everyone. Thank you, Dr. Anne-Marie Lakada. <laughs> uh, so this is a good afternoon uh, and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for attending the premiere of Opening Doors to College an amazing documentary of human potential. All human beings are born with intellectual differences. For me, this documentary demonstrates the potential of all human beings to grow and learn no matter where they begin. The film demonstrates the true purpose of higher education, to bring people together for learning, growing, and more and exploring more desirable futures as a community. The message of inclusion, integration, and interactions, the three I's, as I call it, are depicted throughout the film. I want to commend the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium and its members for making a profound institutional change, one person at a time around the Commonwealth. The Integrated Studies Program at Millersville University has not only opened the doors to individuals with intellectual disability, but brought action to Millersville's EPIC values. And EPIC is spelled E-P-I-I-C. Before Integrated Studies, Inclusion was an aspiration, and now it is a means embraced by the entire Millersville University community, and one of its strongest proponents is with us today, Dr. Daniel Wuba, Millersville University president, whom you will hear later. I want to thank Dan Habib for dedicating his amazing and well-known talents in making this film and the leaders of our Integrated Studies program, Dr. Newell, Dr. Thomas Newell, Dr. Anne-Marie Lakata, Ms. Jan Bechtel, and many, many others 
students and staff that they work with. Finally, I would be remiss if I, went, if I do not mention how proud I am of our students represented in this film by Missy, Curtis, and Fudia, and all of their classmates for seizing this opportunity to grow intellectually and personally. Congratulations. So attendees, thank you for coming. Thank you for the work you do and enjoy this amazing film. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Prabhu. Uh, we really appreciate your joining us today and, and with those incredibly warm words. It's uh, a great way to kick it off today. So thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Dan Habib. Uh, happy Juneteenth, by the way. It's a really important national day for us. And we think this is a pretty amazing way to, to be a small part of the celebration of this day, because as you'll see in this film, um, the work of Millersville at Temple, the work of Think College nationally, has a huge focus on diversity, access, and equity in education. And you're gonna see that um, very much so in the film. So we hope that that in, in some small but important way uh, emphasizes and reemphasizes the, the meaning of Juneteenth. So I'm Dan Habib, a filmmaker. I'm based at the Institute on Disability at the University of New Hampshire. I'm the project director of our project called the Inclusive Communities Project. Um, my previous films include, including Samuel, who cares about Kelsey, Mr. Connolly has ALS and Intelligent Lives. Many of you, I think, have joined us for some of the recent reunion screenings we've done. So this is another one of a series, um, but this time being hosted by Millersville University. So I just briefly about myself, I live in Concord, New Hampshire with my wife, Betsy, and our son, Samuel, 20, who's watching our webinar today, and is also a college student at our local community college. Um, he, he lives here with us right now, along with his uh, service dog, Proton. Our older son, Isaiah, is 23, lives in Flagstaff, Arizona, and he has uh, recently started work as a direct support professional uh, worker with, uh, for youth with emotional and behavioral disabilities. As you see here in the picture, I'm featured with two of our stars from the film that you're going to meet uh, uh, through the film shortly, Missy and Curtis at Millersville University. Um, just a few housekeeping notes before we launch and show the, um, the, the film. Uh, you know, today is the opening doors to college premiere of the film, so we're very excited to show that and to, to share that with you in the audience. Um, so well, that'll be coming up in just a minute. But um, right afterwards, the film, we're going to have a brief discussion, as Dr. Prabhu mentioned, with Millersville University's president, Danny Wuba, Dr. Danny Wuba. So that's very exciting that he's able to join us today. Then we're going to jump right into a question and answer with uh, most of the film stars uh, from, from the film. I'll facilitate that. And then towards the end, we're going to have time for an open Q&A. Uh, and, and then Amory will come back to give some closing comments and share some really important resources. So you want to be sure to stick around with us till probably about 1.40 today. Um, you don't have to worry about turning on and off your cameras if you're just here as uh, attendees today. All your mics and webcams have been deactivated, so you won't, um, won't be on camera. But if you do have a question for, your, for our panel, I recommend you take a look at the bottom of your Zoom screen and you should see a little Q&A box. And that's where you wanna put your panel questions. Now, at the same time, we're gonna keep the chat function live throughout the whole webinar. So you can you know, ask questions during the film or make comments or just share your enthusiasm or <laughs> questions, anything you wanna say. Um, it is a family friendly audience. So keep, keep that in mind, obviously. We have a lot of young people joining us today. Um, and we'll answer as many questions as we can. So during the course of the webinar. Uh, so finally, if you have any questions after today's webinar, please email the Pennsylvania Higher Education Consortium. Um, Gabriella, uh, one of the, our team members, can put that link in the chat as well, because it's a long uh, email address. So you can certainly use that to contact us afterwards. And as I said, the panel will join us live after the closing credits. So um, I'm going to turn my camera off. And Dr. Prabhu, if you want to turn your camera off at this point. We will um, be ready now to enjoy the 36 minute film and I'll be monitoring the chat as well as the people and feel free to ask questions during that time. And we'll see you with Dr. Wuba, the president of Millersville University and then the panel right after we conclude the film in about 36 minutes. Thank you again so much for joining us and uh, looking forward to sharing the film with you. Thank you. 
title, quote, It always seems impossible until it is done. Nelson Mandela. Titles. Millersville and Temple Universities are part of the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium. This consortium is made up of dozens of diverse and influential colleges and high schools that promote inclusive higher education. The consortium is part of a national network called Titles. Title, quote, It always seems impossible until it is done. Nelson Mandela. Titles, Millersville and Temple Universities are part of the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium. This consortium is made up of dozens of diverse and influential colleges and high schools that promote inclusive higher education. The consortium is part of a national network called Think College, which is dedicated to developing, expanding, and improving inclusive higher education options for people with intellectual disability that lead to meaningful employment opportunities. This film shows how inclusive higher education creates a sense of belonging for students like Missy, Curtis, Janet, and Fudia. Title, Opening Doors to College, a film by Dan Habib. Two swans float across a pond. Title, Millersville University, Millersville, Pennsylvania. In a classroom. From a professional and a human perspective, the most important thing I think for, for social workers is to understand well, what does that mean to you? But we also have to recognize that this is happening in this greater context of things where there's those social injustice, where people have been put in boxes, where sweeping generalizations about populations have been made. Does that make sense? Does that sound about right? A couple students smile. All right. One goes to her dorm with her roommate. This is your Facebook? Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And goodness. I think I saw your profile on my Facebook. You're beautiful in this picture. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. She wears a prom dress. Uh oh. Oh, someone's angry. <laughs> Later, she's in a common room. Hi, Missy. Hi. Uh, how are you? Good. Missy sits at her laptop. What are we working on today? Missy Jackson. Millersville student, um, Integrated Studies. Homo, homo, homo. Mark Masoner, student, <laughs> educational homo. support coach. I have homework too. When we started this program, I had a professor call me on the phone and said, there is no place at this university for people with intellectual disability. Thomas J. Newville. I said, do you know that a little over 100 years ago, your peers said there's no place at this university for women? or people who are African-American, or people who are Latino, or people who have physical disabilities. We've been segregating people a long time, and it has not worked. Maybe we should try something else. In a lecture hall. Do you like that clean acoustic guitar sound? It's a thin texture, right? And it makes- Director of Integrated really Studies, Jan Bechtel. Integrated Studies is a fully inclusive initiative for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities to come and have a fully inclusive college experience. So that's everything from academic, social, residential, and personal well-being. But a man speaks to Missy in an office. The program's been in existence since 2014. We started with one student, and now we have 16. What have you successfully overcome? In another of Missy's classes. Right? Gahai. Bechtel. Integrated study students also work on vocational career exploration and building relationships. So it helps them grow as individuals and also in terms of their career and their future. They're admitted as full-time non-degree seeking students. They receive a university approved certificate. It's a meaningful credential and it's modeled right after our own Millersville University diploma. In another lecture hall. All right, excellent. Okay, what other call to action might there be? Yeah. The developmental upgrades of NFO equipment for player safety. Okay, the or the use of it. Yeah. Professor right. Victor Capici. So let's frame it this way: to mandate the use of more protective equipment in football. I'm, I'm rephrasing it a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Integrated that study might student be Curtis Ostrowski nods. Called action. Curtis. My aunt texted my mom about this program, and as soon as I got that message, I put my laptop down, 
rushed to the library and got everything I needed to apply. Theo Brady. When people say college is not for students with intellectual disability, then you're going to continue to oppress. Adjunct professor, disability studies. We got to be very intentional about basic civil rights. Everyone needs an opportunity to participate. We need to open doors instead of close doors. And that means a little bit more investment of your time as a professor. That's what we do with any student. Missy opens the door. In the deep south, white America oppress black America. In class. Separate schools, separate classrooms. She listens with other students. You have those kind of traditions and customs that you think is okay because you see it every day, you got used to it. But all along, it was oppressive. And that's the same thing happened today with disability. She walks down a hall. Because I was like, I can't get my homework. None. She reads a note on a door. So, so I just like, I was like, uh, called Gray. She sits in a chair nearby. Uh, I'm not coming back to eat high. I took a go to college so I can go and get homework and cut going. So, can I get cut going? So, I go look at the main cases. Bechtel. Missy has, in her time here so far, developed a great deal in her self-advocacy. When she first came, she was really reluctant to talk. There were some students on campus that would call her names and things, and I, I think that made her go more inward. Professor Onik Arianga. Now, Missy has a bit of challenges speaking, but that should not detract from the fact that she has a mind of her own. She can try as difficult as it is to express herself. There's nothing more important than bringing a perspective of the world based of your education in society. Yeah, not me. In a gym, Curtis walks on a treadmill. Ostrowski is a very, very brilliant person. When they got out of his shell, Ostrowski became one of the most uh, vocal students in the classroom. Title, Curtis drops in to see his former professor, Onek Arianga, during office hours. Hey. Come in, come in. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you very much. Yeah, registration is coming. Have you decided on courses you'll be taking? I, I picked, so I picked oh. out one so far. Uh, which one is that? Psychology. Psychology, yeah. ah, okay. Have you spoken with the professor? Uh, no, not yet. Find time to talk to the professor. I'm definitely coming back here. Anytime, man, anytime. I'll always love to see you. Man, I, I'll, as I was walking down the hall, I was yeah. like, oh, man, I'm seeing Ona. Because <laughs> you had confidence in me. You remember what I told you earlier? Anything that you want to do, you can do it. Do not let anybody tell you that you can't. In this world, it's the effort that you put into yeah. something, not what people tell you. Uh, think of how we could have lost that voice, that prominent voice. Not only is Curtis Ostrowski, a better person, his classmate became better students as well. Title, quote, knowing what must be done does away with fear, Rosa Parks. People walk on another campus marked with Temple University flags, red with a white tee. Title, Temple University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two young women walk in a hall. Yeah, I know she did, wanted to do today because she couldn't do Wednesday. Okay, so In good. class. There's a lot of vernacular movement styles in this, moves of the people. Moves that are done in communities, that are done in homes. Janet Caesar, student, leadership and parties. career studies. I told my sister I wanted to come to college. And she was like, really? You really sure you want to come to college? Because it's hard. I was like, yeah, I think I can do it. She was like, I believe you can do it too. The other young woman, student and educational coach Olivia Quinn, sits by Janet listening to dance professor Rhonda Moore. Players took all of those moves and brought them into their acts, the comics, the singers, dancers. He's dipping back to all the things that they were watching on TV from the past. So let's move the chairs. 
They all seem so lively. She rolls her eyes. One, Once they do move two, the chairs, she leads three, them in clapping as they step four, back. Then they form pairs and clap each other's good. hands. Almost Janet almost and Olivia good. do it together. Almost goodbye, got six, here we go. They all step forward and clap side to side. They do the same stepping back. Janet. They sent me a letter and they was like, congratulations, Miss James C. You got into the Universe now. I'm jumping for joy, crying and everything. And I told my sister, I got into Temple University. And she came home almost cried. The class keeps dancing. Why not? Why not? I love it, actually, here at Temple. I'm making all these new friends. I always want the experience to see what it's like, what people does here. Her sister, Adina Holmes. She's made new friends here. She's gotten much more dedicated about studying, and she she's really grown. Program director, Linda Miller. Leadership and career studies is a program for students who have intellectual disabilities and or on the autism spectrum. It's a four-year program here at Temple University, and students are fully engaged in this vibrant urban campus. They take undergraduate classes with other students. They are members of student organizations and really are involved in the full spectrum of activities here on campus. Coordinator Titania Bodhi. Some of the classes that our students have expressed interest in are classes like criminal justice, um, political science. There's a lot of history courses that have been taken. Uh, in Janet's case, she's uh, really into the arts. They also work with a coach who's an undergraduate student who lives on or off campus who provides both academic and social supports. Janet. Well, I have an intellectual disability, but even though I still have a little delay, I'm still normal just like everybody else. I'm proud that I am who I am. With mentor Kylie Billy. Did you register for classes for next semester? I sure did. I know I wanted to take criminal justice, then I would take Miller. Leadership and career studies is an opportunity for them to develop mm -hmm. their career aspirations. There are many opportunities for them to do internships, to uh, do job discovery, with the whole goal of having people have a integrated competitive job when they're done with the program. Janet and Kylie enter a building, then escort children into a room. Janet. And I'm in a pre-K class. A teacher watches. I work with four-year-olds. They like to run around. They be busy, but they're very sweet and they fun. They'll call me Miss Miss Janet. They work with kids at a table. Some of them have trouble writing letters or numbers, and I kind of help them with that. With a boy who holds a marker. Want to make a circle? Want some circles? He lets her have the marker. So you do a circle like this. You want a small? She gives it back. See how you do a circle? Okay, now you're making me up. How? Uh, she's not trying to mess up. She's trying to help. Janet. By me being in college, I'm preparing them, letting them know, okay, it's okay to come to college. It's okay to be scared to want to do so, because <laughs> I was scared when I first came, so it's okay. We all stand and dance. The girl demonstrates for Janet. Miller. We've had students who liked uh, security, so they've worked at Temple Police. Someone was interested in uh, being a seamstress, so they worked in our theater department. So it's the full range. Janet walks with the girl to the end of a hallway, and they walk outside. Janet. And it will land me more jobs because I had a class with child development, and I'm good with kids since I did my internship. It kind of put me more further in my career. They run together. Adina. My long-term hopes and goals for Janet were for her to be working in a field that she's always going to be happy and something that she's really passionate about and working towards self-sufficiency. And she's really been doing an excellent job at that thus far. So where she won't be needing, needing the big sister much longer, so, but I'm proud of her. The kids play on a play structure with the Philadelphia skyline in the background. Title, quote, 
It is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. Audre Lorde. Back at Millersville, Capici leads a small class, including Curtis. All right, so let's figure out who's on the panel so we can move forward. Who's, who's on the panel? Oh, girl. All right, excellent. Curtis changes seats. All right, who's, who's, who do we have first here today? Now, what if I told you that you can make a little extra money on, you know, a small streaming site called YouTube? An average user makes approximately 2 to $3 for both kinds of advertisements per 1,000 views. It is definitely possible to make more than that, though, with the prime success story being PewDiePie. This YouTube powerhouse made over $12 million from YouTube ads in 2017. Anybody ready? Yes, sir. Sure. Um, you were loud, but in a good way. You projected yourself well, I guess. Curtis. You had a great intro. Uh... Really cool topic, considering my sister's trying to get into YouTube. So it was very informational, um, just well done. Later. As of September 11th, 2001, the original mission of the Chemical Corps was to protect the forest, was expanded to a new role with Homeland Security. Curtis. That snap at the end just, like, killed the mood. Later, he walks through a building. Whenever I meet someone new, I feel like, for me, it's important to, like, share my balance issue with them. Out in the snow. I gotta be careful, because my uh, shoes don't have the best traction. He crosses a wet parking lot. And I, like, stumble or fall down a lot. He walks on another paved area by a building with a clock tower as light snow falls. I can't have alcohol, which I'm, I'm fine with because at least I don't get a beer belly, um, so. In better weather, Missy walks with two young men. I'm going to go alcohol. In a cafeteria, some young women chat with Missy as she sits with them. Um, can a coin could get caught or get caught and go caught? But I, 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 I can't call. The hung, how can a coin could get caught or and go caught? She reads in a common room. Curtis walks to a building. This, this one guy in high school, he just said, Dude, are you drunk or something? And I mean, I try to ignore it, but inside it kills you. Bechtel. On the face of it, you would meet Curtis, and he's quite articulate and thoughtful. And people would question why would he choose integrated studies rather than pursuing a regular degree with support. There's an invisible disability that you may not be aware of that kind of impacts um, his thought process and the way that he approaches things and his ability to organize things. We help them build capacity to take them in the direction they want to go, whether it's a typical degree or whether it is remaining with integrated studies and pursuing their career. Curtis. At the very up, beginning last semester, I really didn't step out of my shell too much, but this year I feel like I have somewhat more people I can go and talk to. And Curtis sits eating with Missy and a couple other young women. I want them to play like Travis Scott's new album. <laughs> yes, that's a great album. What's your favorite song? Um, Sickle mode, where it does the transition yeah. for like it's like two different songs in one. That that bus beat change is life changing. Yeah. I like uh, I like the one with Twenty One Savage. Oh. And C Seventeen. That's what it's called. Yeah. What are you doing this weekend? You doing anything fun? I'm working on Sunday. Where do you work? He points. Right. There. Catering? Yeah. I had a 13-hour shift on Saturday. So one of the biggest challenges that many students face is the cost of college. Bechtel. 
Students in integrated studies are required to have a job by the end of the second semester because we really feel that campus employment is a good way to get their feet wet. Many of them have never had a job. Newville. There's some recent data that indicates that people with intellectual disability who have not attended an inclusive post-secondary ed initiative are employed at the rate of 17 percent. Curtis signs in at a reception desk. Students who have graduated from our initiative are employed at the rate of 85 percent. Curtis looks through library shelves. My manager gives me a list of books that I have to find and bring back to the front desk for other people to check out. He looks at books on a cart. It's a little, little stressful on my eyes because I'm a big dude and sometimes the books are like way down here. Kneeling, he checks a bottom shelf. We try to keep it. Newville. So that folks can come here if they want to, no matter what their financial resources are. And we have been uh, vigorously building a scholarship fund. Mark sits with Missy. Go to Dr. Prady's class. Let's look at your other class. They stare at her laptop. That one right there. Pre-colonial Africa. Bechtel. Each student has an educational support coach, one or more. Maybe you need to ask her. Coaches uh, are undergraduate students and also graduate students that work with them in support. Okay academics, career exploration, building relationships, independent living. And so the role of the coach is to kind of help model the role of a student, then to help students to advocate and develop that confidence to advocate. Okay. I have a 15 page paper oh, that I have to write for one of my classes. Oh God. <laughs> so you can, you can help me write it. I'm not picky. <laughs> Professor Kathleen M. Walsh. So I want you to take 30 seconds to make some notes about one thing that you did during your break. Social work class. Or even in the last couple days that celebrated your strengths. And I know that this is hard. Missy looks up at her. Because it's really hard to say nice things about ourselves. I'm waiting for my mom and dad just like you. Student Elia Hall who makes Missy laugh. Uh, yeah, they do a lot for me, so I'm always it's great to have them. I'm grateful for my sister and brother, too. Nothing movie, nothing TV. Go outside. Walsh joins her. What are some of your strengths? Oh. Oh, wait. Uh. Can I tell you what I see? Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things about you is that you are always here and you're always on time and early. Walsh crotches in front of her. And you are always a part of the conversation. Like, you're always, I know that you are hearing me. Uh, it's really, I think it's such an important thing. She stands. When we're talking about the capacity to tackle injustice, engage in conversations about difference, we also have to be able to engage in conversations about similarities, what brings us joy, what unifies us rather than what divides us. And it leads us to empowerment, where we are trying Bechtel. to- One of the first things we do with students when they're admitted to integrated studies is person-centered planning, and that is in the form of a path. A large mind map hangs on her dorm wall. I guess, um, I guess I'm not a guy, uh, I guess I'm a and so they have, you have like your dreams and your goals, your first steps? Yeah. And because it's not cold. And. Bechtel. And so we bring all the family and anyone who has significant them together. And then we kind of plan out what their hopes and dreams are and how we can contribute to that with their time at Millersville. Missy's roommate scrolls on her phone. So these girls, I know, I know two of them. That's me in this photo when I was uh, in dance. I'm a dancer. If I have a segregated class on how to take care of your room, they're not going to listen to me. Bechtel. But if they live with a roommate and they see how their roommate takes care of their room or doesn't take care of their room, that's where the learning takes place. Capici lectures your as point Curtis about, listens. About changing direction going from. The we have a long history of designing services for people with intellectual disability that are separate from. Newville. You'll find some campuses that have designed specific classes just for the student with an intellectual disability. It's well-meaning, it's well-intentioned, it's not going to work out well. Missy smiles in her class. You simply cannot 
prepare someone to live in the ordinary world by having them in a separate setting. It only prepares them for the unordinary. Curtis. I don't like the online class so much. Can you sign up for your classes next semester yet? They sit in the dining area. Um. Do I have it? I don't know what I'm gonna do. Do you have a boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were friends before we did anything. Uh, so I know him for nine years. Damn. <laughs> yeah. We're dating a scene where it goes. Many will ask why college is so critical for students with disabilities, particularly students in integrated studies with intellectual disabilities. And I would say that Bechtel. why should they not have the opportunity to develop as human beings and uh, experiment with different careers and figuring out who they are and building relationships like typical peers do. He smiles with some other people. Title, quote, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. John Dewey. At Temple, Gregory M. Anderson. The Leadership and Career Studies program fits in multiple ways into the mission of the College of Education. College of Education Dean. We have a social justice mission and a set of values that's based on uh, supporting students uh, with the principles of inclusion, really driving what we do. We think it's emblematic of an inclusion mission that isn't just based on things that we normally associate with inclusion, like race or ethnicity or class, but recognizing the true diversity of our humanity. Two young women walk together. I am a freshman, and I'm so glad to have this. I'm so, I thought I know get into college, I have this opportunity to get in, and I was so excited to have to go to have classes as, as, as the same as other students and stuff. Fudia Kameka. Get like us, we, we don't want really to get into stuff like that. And I thought that I wouldn't get in, but I did. They sit with others. I was happy, excited, just to get to experience like other kids and stuff, to have like a, like a, like a college life. I hang out with my friends, and go to football game, the whole coming game and stuff. I did all that. She laughs with them. In high school, I have to be with a teacher all the time and stuff, so it was not like any dependent there. And my mom always got to make sure that I'm there and taken care of and stuff. I adopted Fidia when she was six. I brought her home from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Her mother, Liz Meyer. All the specialists told me that she was very bright and that the learning piece would probably click in. It was just her lack of exposure, lack of nutrition, all those kind of things. Then around 11 or so, I decided to have a psych ed eval, um, and it showed what I thought to be an intellectual disability. Fadia is shown in a photo as a young girl. Fadia's life in Sierra Leone was very traumatic. She was there during um, Civil War. She lost her father. She came home with severe malnutrition. She was six, and she was the size of about a two- or three-year-old. The reason we're here at Temple is she stood out in her high school. Her teacher said to me, Liz, you've, you've got to apply for this program. And I was kind of, I didn't understand. I said, how is that going to work? She was more nervous than I was. Fudia. A, no, a nervous, worry mom. <laughs> Title, Fudia's Circle of Support Meeting with Fellow yeah, Temple Students, alone. College is not like high school. It's totally different. Like, it's not, they don't really have much drama. There's no fighting there. It's, it's more like independent. We had said... In the meeting. That you had a presentation to finish mm -hmm. and your homework to finish. Yep. Yes, I did. Awesome. It's like was talking like going up and have, having a civilized conversation. Miller. There's always one person who's there for the students to, to be supportive to the student, um, as well as this team approach based on the circle of support. Maybe it was that one yeah. that you guys were talking about. No, thank you. The idea is that the student is really learning how to manage his or her own supports, which is so important in the adult world because you really need to know what supports you need in order to get a quality of life. Have then, your meeting for your internship? Yeah, I did. It was oh. yesterday. Yeah, it was good. Good? I told her that I'm going to do childcare the most. We want to be invisible, that students are just seen as any other student on Temple University's campus. So what are your plans with or without your coaches coming up on campus? 
I'm gonna be in an outdoor club. Okay. Oh, I was gonna be in an outdoor club this year too, but I think it was too late. Yeah, and the baking club. A coach types. Baking club. What other club are they? I could join. Were you on the list? For Liz. The I think I've just gotten more comfortable that there's enough scaffolding to hold her up. Student like Moira that. Smith mm -hmm. walked yeah, with Cynthia to the student center. The classwork is a little bit hard. I had two of them, leadership communication and interpersonal communication. The chapter was like hard and stuff, I got like a lot of reading, a lot of writing. At a table. He said he's like um like like, like a speed, like slid more of a check slip, she's reading. Slip it. Into? I don't I don't even drive. I, oh right now. I, I, I want to no, not even. No? Mm, you don't I, want to? I do want to. My, my mom like make my she don't like driving because she don't think like, um I should drive because it's not really it's not really worth driving and stuff. You live in a city and stuff, you live, live close to everything to walk. In high school, the expectations were less than they are now. And I think she's risen to the occasion. In class. Specifically thinking about the dance, how old were the people who created the first hip hop dances? Guest presenter, dance experience class, Mark Metal Wong. 20. They were like 11 years old, 10, 11, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. That even though it was invented by like these literal children, it has, it really quickly evolved into a very complicated, very, uh, Artistically and aesthetically deep art. Yeah. Going to so classes with other kids is fun. You um, get to learn different things and stuff. And I, I like to dance. Why? Why did hip hop happen? It was probably like a social like movement. Yeah, it definitely was a social like, movement. Like a rebellion. I think like the most basic thing that hip hop is expressing is I am here and I'm alive and I'm a person. And for a 10 year old living in the Bronx where like nobody thinks that you are ever going to go up to be anything. To say that and express that is a very, very important thing. Pudi is very passionate She's about like, dance. Bodhi, I foresee her possibly participating in an internship here on campus where she's engaged with the film, media, and uh, dance department. Again, to add a little bit of the Latin American influence, hip twist on the back step. Wong leads the class. Liz. This is only her freshman year. I can't believe how quickly it's gone. And I've seen actually an increase in her reading ability. She and Moira try to follow Wong's next steps. Okay. Like, I didn't think college was possible for Fidia. And here she is. So I don't say never or no to anything. Anderson. Having students with disabilities in classes has focused our faculty on seeing the true diversity of the learning experience and the true diversity of the student body. It's compelled our faculty to reflect on their practice. So it actually makes us better teachers, makes us better professors, makes us better scholars and researchers. Pidia. Someday I would do and get married and have a family of my own. I'm happy to be in college. I got that more independent. Wong break dances. Yeah, I love it. After twisting upside down, he spins to his feet. <laughs> Moira leads Fadia into clapping in a circle. <laughs> Title, quote, I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. David Bowie. Missy applauds cheerleaders in a parade. Bechtel. So many people will dismiss students with disabilities. They'll say, just have them stay in high school till they're 21 in a life skills classroom and learn to brush your teeth 30,000 times, like that's going to change. She high fives people. Newville. They're making a thousand decisions a day about who to have lunch with, about how to dress, about should I go to class, about should I go to the party, about do I go to the football game. A group marches in unison. Millersville president Daniel Wuba. We are supposed to educate all our citizens. And students with disabilities are part of our citizenry. So we have that moral imperative to educate them. He waves from a Jeep in the parade. My own grandson is autistic. Missy waves. He's very bright. All he needs is the opportunity. And he can excel in anything he wants to do. Curtis. My parents give me a good dose of kick in the ass because they believe in me a hundred percent. And sometimes I take that for granted. They smile in a photo. Mom, if you're watching this, oh dad, you believe in me so much and 
I know it's stressful, but I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And ultimately, I want to make you proud of me. In another photo, Wuba hands Curtis a diploma cover saying Millersville University as they both wear caps and gowns. Braddy. Unfortunately, what we have learned from generation to generation is to not interact with people with disabilities. You know what I do? My How can you know me if you don't interact with me? Once we get a place of commonality, we start seeing each other as, as, as the same and not necessarily those people. That kind of looks like mad and angry. So I can come out and get tacky. She goes out in the snow with another young woman. Go ahead. Go ahead. She throws a snowball. Hey. She bends down to make another as her target runs. <laughs> she throws it at a young man coming outside, who bends down to make his own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they make more and fight. Yeah. 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 We're not gonna get you. Hey. She chases her first target. They both throw snowballs at the camera. <laughs> Title, quote, once social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore, Cesar Chavez. Titles, directed and produced by Dan Habib. Executive producers, Jan Bechtel, Anne-Marie Licata, Thomas Newville. Edited by James Rutenbeck. This film was supported by the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Education through the acquisition of a transition and post-secondary programs for students with intellectual disabilities, TPSID, grant. Produced in collaboration with Millersville University and Institute on Disability, UCED, University of New Hampshire. More information, www.millersville.edu slash integrated studies www.temple.edu slash Institute on Disabilities www.pihec.com Copyright 2020, Millersville University Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, really hope you enjoyed the film. And I'm so thrilled that we have one of the film stars. Probably you've never been called that before, right? Dr. Wuba, a film star <laughs> with us today. So um, uh, again, that we're, we're really feeling uh, excited that we're able to share this film with all of you, the hundreds of people with us today, especially on an important holiday like Juneteenth. And uh, we invited Dr. Wuba. We're really honored to have you, Dr. Wuba. So thank you for coming, coming along for this webinar. Um, to be here. Great. So you're in a unique position as a university president to talk about how um, integrated studies, a program like this that you have been a very strong supporter of, um, how it has benefited, you know, it's obvious that it has benefited Missy and Curtis and Fudia and Janet, but can you tell us a little bit more about how you feel integrated studies has benefited the university as a whole? Uh, thank you very much, um, Don. Uh, I want to really um, thank Dr. Thomas Newville and his entire staff, and also the stars of our movie, uh, that's Missy Curtis, Claudia, and Feduya. Um, with regards to the impact of this program on Millersville, it's you know, astounding. And I'll sh just share three with you. The first one is that this program aligns very well with our values. And I'll mention just a number of those public mission, which is one of the P's in our values, this program enables us to accomplish that particular value. Professionalism, as we just saw, all the students in this program learn some skill set. When um, Dr. Thomas Newville mentioned that just by taking part in this program, students you know, end up that 85% of them get jobs. We are providing them with skills professionally. Inclusion. It underlies everything that we are doing. And then finally, compassion. Because in this case, the student coaches who work with them have to be patient, they have to be compassionate, and they actually learn from our integrated students and study students. That's the first one. The second one has to do with the fact that through this program, it provides opportunities to people who would never have this opportunity to be integrated 
What I like about our program is that our students are part of the student community. They are not marginalized in any way when we are on our campus. And the last benefit that as a university we get from this program is our own student benefit by getting the chance to interact with students who don't look like them, who may not behave like them, but that value that it adds to their life prepares them for the future in which they are going to live. Great, thank you. Very, very well said. I, 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 you covered a lot of ground there, but I wanted to ask you one other follow-up question. Um, you know, the, in the disability rights movement, uh, we, we think about access being a right, you know, and this idea of equity and access. And obviously in today's environment, there's so much discussion around racial equality and racial justice. Do you see a way that this all kind of uh, converges? You know, the Black Lives Matter movement, integrated studies, the Millersville values. Where do you see the intersection of all that? Well, um, there is a big intersection. The current social um, that tribe that we see in our you know, community is due to an intersection of what I would call a pre-existing condition with this structural discrimination. You know, in this case, racism is one of those you see the other person as the other, not you. That intersection with the pandemic has really led to the social strife that we currently see. So in the same way, as Dr. Thomas Newville said earlier, and it made, you know, it resonated with me, a hundred years ago, African-Americans were not allowed to sit in the same classroom with other students. In the same way, women were not educated at the higher education level. But in this day and age, we know that a lot of the discoveries and the advancements that have been made have been made by these same people who were not even allowed to sit in classrooms. When I you know, look at my own grandson, all he needs to do is to hear a, a piece of music. He can play it without looking at anything. He has something to add to mankind. If we don't provide them with these opportunities, how would they be able to you know, better our own uh, communities? So in terms of you know, the, um, social justice and you know, discrimination, it's only a matter of time that through programs such as our integrated studies program, these students with intellectual uh, disabilities would be integrated into our you know, regular classes and our regular curriculum. Well, well, Dr. Wuba, thank you for your eloquence, for your incredible support for integrated studies, and, and for your overall lens of the seeing the value of diversity and inclusion. It's, you're really a, a model for, I think, a lot of other people, both on campus and outside of campus, in doing that. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to turn it over to some of the film uh, stars now, but thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Wuba. So now we are so, so happy to have two of the film stars, one star and her sister, I guess I would say, which is Janet and Adina. Nice to see you guys. Hey, nice to see you too. We're hey, good. great to see you. Thanks for coming aboard. So Janet, thank it's great you. to see you again. I so enjoyed being with you down at Temple University. Yeah, I had lots of fun. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. I'm in school. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, listen, um, we since the movie came out a little while ago, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to in life uh, since I saw you? You know, it was probably a year and a half ago or so when I filmed. Yeah. Um, not actually really just relaxing, just enjoying actually the summer vacation <laughs> that I have off. Um, I miss school a lot, of course going back, um, plus I miss friends on top of it, so miss just hanging out with friends and miss seeing everybody at school. Um, but I've been doing good. Um, I've just been relaxing, just chilling, just watching TV. <laughs> how did it go when you probably had to switch to remote learning, right? Somewhere in the middle of the semester. How was, how was that for you? What? Lost your volume there. Go ahead. Then it was like, um, it was actually, it can become easy, um, to get used to once I got the hang of it, of getting online. So it was like, yeah. It and what good. about, what about in terms of work? Are you still working in childcare or anything? At the term, recently, not right now, but since everything's been happening, not right now, but 
permanently and I'm still working, but not right now. All right. Well, let me turn to Adina for a minute, and then I'm going to come back to you, Jana, for one more question. But Adina, you've been at Janet's side for a long time, you know, as your sister. Um, what did you see? What kind of changes did you see in Janet? You talked about that a little bit in the film, but what do you think the impact has been of her going to Temple? You know what? She's intellectual, much more intellectually advanced. Okay, she's much more outgoing. You know, she's not as introverted as she she wasn't completely introverted but i mean she just flourished she is she's amazing and she was very dedicated to her studies very adamant about getting up on the school every day and you know i would say overall she's mature she's already an awesome awesome person but i mean she's done quite well and i'm really really proud of her I could see that. No, and you express that in the film too. Let me ask you, you know, what would you share with other family members, siblings, parents of students who are maybe on the webinar today who are 15, 16, 17, 18 years old thinking about going into a similar program? How, you know, are there things that parents can do or siblings or guardians to help support them and encourage them and, and make the transition as positive as possible? Yes, I would say be 100% supportive of any goals that they would like to have set in place and always encourage them to believe that anything they want to set forth to do is possible. Mm -hmm. And also give them a lot of time, also give them a lot of self time to maybe study. For example, there was times where Janet may have had finals and she needed to study. That would be her quiet time where Under any conditions, I would allow her to be disturbed by anyone. Phone, you know, phone goes off if you need music to help you study, whatever, but definitely her do not disturb time. You, know, you allow your children to have enough time where they can study, where they can focus, and I felt like that was very important in her development as well. Got it. Um, the connection's a little shaky, just so you know, but we're hearing you. It's just a little in and out, so if people are having that issue, uh, that's what it is. But Janet, let me come back to you for one more question before we move on to Curtis and his family. Um, you're, you have wisdom now. You've been at, this, at Temple for, is this, will this be your third year in the, in the fall? Yeah, that, yeah, this will be my senior year. Yeah. Your senior year, okay. So um, what would you want to pass along to the future students that might can come into Temple or another college about, you know, your wisdom, your wise words about uh, how to be successful in college and what you've learned? I would say um, that just follow your dreams no matter what you go through or no matter how you, you know, put it. Um, temple could be, I mean, school could be hard, but just follow your dreams. Um, never give up of what you want to go to school on, and you get there. Did you find that's a great advice? Follow your dreams, and and so as as Adina was saying, keep high expectations for your family members, right? I'm having a little trouble okay. hearing. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. So, so yeah, so Adina was saying keep high expectations for your family members and Janet, you're saying follow your dreams. Did you ever learn any yep. any tricks about like academics and studying and anything that made you successful academically at school? Um, I would say yes. I learned some tricks how to like get to like move um, in a way of learning how to get around on campus. Um, and just like mainly focused on your uh, destination point. Um, just leave that as your destination point. Um, so just leave it as your destination point. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how I got around because I'm very. Okay. We're having a bunch like of. Like direction. So I leave that as a direction. direction. Yeah. All right, it's, the last part came in and out, but I think we, we covered almost all, we heard almost everything you said just broke out a couple of times. So let me, I'm gonna let um, Curtis and his family come on now. So we'll come back to you guys in a little bit when we regroup, okay? Thank you guys so much for all the great contributions. So you can right, turn your camera you. mic off. Thank you, and then we'll have Curtis and his family join us. We'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. Let's see, so if Curtis and his family wanna come on board, there we go, there's Curtis. Nice to see you, Curtis. I think you're muted, Curtis. You just need to hit your um, your unmute button. There you go. There we go. How you doing? 
I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me and my family. Yeah, it's great to see you again. I bet you're hoping the Steelers uh, get to play this year in pro football. I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I'm just hoping football is going to be on in general. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. So is my son Samuel and a lot of us. So, well, it's great to see you. Um, tell me a little bit about what you've been up to since I last saw you. That was a couple years ago now. Yeah, yeah, totally. So the summer of my graduation, which was in 2019, I um, already lined up a job for three months um, out in Wisconsin, Dells, Wisconsin, um, at a... Uh, Easter Seals with Easter Seals Camp, which is a camp for kids and adults with disabilities. And my role was, I was a camp counselor and it was amazing. I, I loved the helping the kids and adults with anything they needed. So it was fun to be a part of that and wow. When I got back from that, I actually went back to doing retail um, at a couple couple job locations. First at Marshalls, selling selling shoes. That was that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then recently, I got a job. Well, I got two jobs recently. One unfortunately shut down due to coronavirus, but. I was supervising the elementary kids with like recess and lunch. And then my other job I currently still have is cashier at Staples. And yeah, just putting up with all those Karens is definitely a blast I enjoy. <laughs> so that's awesome that you had those jobs. That's really fantastic. What, I mean, do you feel like there are certain skills you picked up in going to college that helped you apply, that helped um, you be successful in the work environment? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like what? I definitely, um, when I started the program, uh, going attending the program back in 2017, like I said in the movie, I was sort of, on a defensive side, you know, in my in my shell. I think ever since then, I, I sort of take initiative and just present myself in a more professional way. And my parents see it and everyone else sees it. And I just have to thank the program for that. Do you feel like you learn how to manage your time better in college? I. I still have trouble with that to this day. <laughs> we I'm all working. I'm working. No, oh, that's a hard one. So let so let me ask you um, before I turn to your parents. Let me ask you, what would you want to pass on some some wisdom to the, the the next generation of folks who you know who might have some type of disability who want to come to go to college? What would be your wisdom or advice you want to pass along? I I'd say when you go to college that's the time to really like find out what you're good at and what you want to do. And it's not really about what other people think. It's ultimately your decision. So I, I think that you should ignore your initial surroundings, find a good group of people, study, get your head in the game, and you're straight up to that. Nice. Just just do it. Well said. Well said. You could be, uh, I think you could be on a TV commercial for <laughs> Millersville and other programs. That's great. <laughs> nice work. All right. Let me, um, let me have you slide over and have your parents join us. Then we'll have you circle back when we do the Q&A at the end. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Jeff. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank Good. you. Hey, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. And uh, I really enjoy getting to know your son. He's a really cool dude. Um, let me let me ask you guys what your perspective was on Curtis's kind of evolution, just briefly going to college. You probably saw some changes. What comes off the top of your head in terms of how he changed going to college? I think definitely he's he's more comfortable in his own skin, uh, having really good conversation, in depth conversations, um, being confident uh, for what he can bring to an actual conversation. Mm -hmm. That's good. Want to add anything onto that, Jeff? 
No, I just uh, maybe uh, just uh, embellish that a little bit. First of all, magnificent film, and it's really an honor to be uh, with this wonderful group today. And thank Thanks. you for doing that good work that you're doing. Uh, thank you. The thing is confidence. You know, life is hard for everybody. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of ability or disability you have. And you know, the only way to to get better is to put yourself in situations that are uncomfortable and difficult and challenging. And college is one of those. And you know, especially for uh, kids, you know, the, uh, young adults that are on the call today and guys like Kurt to go there, you know, when you don't have maybe uh, the A game that some of the other students have, but yet still put yourself in, a, in those challenging situations is, you know, that's what makes um, makes this program so wonderful. And we definitely saw that occur when he came home. He was a, he was a more confident individual. And, uh, you know, just listening to the movie and hearing how, um, you know, some of those rough experiences in high school, I mean, those are devastating, you know, that people have to live through that, you know, but uh, to pick yourself up and, you know, dust yourself off and put bandages on your, on your, uh, you know, you know, injured areas, uh, <laughs> and, you know, get back, get back in the game, and, and yeah. college, especially, which is a tough environment. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really cool. So, you know, whatever we all can do to open up the channels for more people to get in programs like this would will be a uh, very, very uh, great positive contribution to society. Sure. No, thank you for saying all that. It's really, really well said. Peggy, what would you want to share with other parents beyond what Jeff just said to help get them in the mindset of this idea? I mean, in my own case as well, it's like there's a certain level of risk that you take as a parent of letting go, right? When you, when you're, we're any child, but particularly your child that might have some additional challenges what would you say to the parents who are listening today? Absolutely. I mean, you raise them and, <clears throat> um, you know, you, you got to be there for when they fall. You're oh, sorry. I get emotional. It's okay. It's all right. Go for it. Um, but, you know, you don't want them to be hurt. And you, Kurt was bullied and made fun of and it's heartbreaking. So when you've got to release them to, to college, you're not there and um, you're afraid, or are they gonna be bullied, or you know, is something bad gonna happen because you're not there to pick up the pieces. But, you know, <clears throat> got a lot of phone calls in the very beginning, but with Jan and her staff, um, they really make it a safe environment. And, you know, they, Kurt made a lot of good friends there and a lot of peer, peer groups and, and things like that. He found kids with similar um, things that they that he enjoys with them and found a good men's group uh, that he participated with and you know they didn't look at him like he was disabled or different they looked at him like another guy going to college which that's huge and um, it made us feel that much more comfortable and confident that we made the, the right decision and he was going to be great and uh, find his wings to soar yeah Really well said. And thank you for being honest in your emotions and in your words. I mean, I think that um, in some ways I feel like, and I do want to, I do have to go to Fidia and Liz next, but I want to say that I think in some ways college, a lot of students may find it's more accepting than high school and more of the kids are a little more mature. There's a little more of a, a, a direct awareness around diversity and, and hopefully that disability is part of our diversity. Um, so I've talked to a lot of young adults who struggled in high school, and middle school, but who really thrived in college like Curtis. So thank you guys for all the support you showed and for being a part of this. We're gonna have you come back on when we do the open Q&A in just a little bit. So thank you so much. We can have you turn off your camera and Mike and we'll have Fadia and Liz join us now. We'll see you guys in a bit. Let's see, so Fadia and Liz, all right. Very efficient, nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. So let's see, Fadi, I'm going to have you come close to the camera and the computer for a minute. Nice to see you. You look great and healthy, and I hope you're feeling good in this weird times we're in. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since I saw you over a year ago making the film. I have been, I, 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 got, I, got, I got a job working at Nest in a play space, and I've been, I've been, um, and I've, um, uh, inter internship at school in a game room, and I'm and I'm hanging out and still exercising, hanging out with my friends. That's awesome. You're a serious runner, right? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. How much are you How much are you running these days? These days, I'm doing like five mile. Wow, 
That's, yeah. five, that's five times as much as I could do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you said you got a job at play at, um, at the child care center. You're still working there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many hours are you putting in there? Um, I put in like, I, I, get, I get there at 9.30. So I'm there like at 1 o'clock. I leave 1 o'clock. So wow. like an hour. Wow. Well, thank you for doing that. I mean, in this time of the pandemic, it's really, that, you're like a frontline worker and somebody that's really helping a lot of families. So thank you. I'm, I'm not working in this pandemic. Oh, you did take, they did stop during that time. Yeah, okay. What, and, and what was the internship like? What did you do for the internship? Um, internship, I work in a game room, like helping, like getting soda and, and giving to the, to the, um, the st other students at, at school. I, and I watch and I help and I, and I count how many people are in the game room and the TV room and the other room. Nice. Yeah. Now you're going back to Temple in the fall? Yes, I hope so. Yeah, right. Depending on how they do it all. Do you have any thoughts about what kind of classes you want to take in the future at Temple? Um, yeah, I'm going to do the birth to nine. Um, hmm? Child development. Yeah, child, child development. And, yep. and I still want to do dancing. So. Yeah, that was a fun class. Man, when yeah. I saw that guy get down and start break dancing, that was like, this is a fun part of college. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And did you did you do okay with uh, going to online learning in the spring? Yeah. I love I loved it. I loved really? It. How come? Um, because I was at home and stuff, my own house, so I was I was good and safe. Nice. And you felt like you were able to. The teachers were good about trying to engage you online and continuing to yeah. teach you effectively. A little issue on, on the phone computer. A little issue, my professor and stuff. Yeah, like issue with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before I turn to your mom, um, probably a lot of people are on the webinar today who are either students who might go to college at some point or their parents. What are some, what's some advice or wisdom you want to pass along to the future students? Um, it's hard at first, but you get nervous and you'll get the hang of it, but you'll love it. Really? What did you love the most about it so far? Um, I love the most about it is learning new things, being independent and having more freedom and get, and trying chuck food is also my favorite thing. <laughs> what was the last thing you said? Trying to what? Chuck food. Eating, eating food. Oh, the truck food. Truck food. That's right. Yeah, I saw all the yeah, trucks yeah. lined up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which is the kind of thing you might not have ever had a chance to do if you weren't in college. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. All that. right. Well, that's awesome. We're going to, um, I'm going to talk to your mom for a little bit and then we'll have you come back when we open up the Q and A. Okay. Good to see you, Liz. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. So Padilla is awesome, as you know, and, and I'm sure she was awesome before college, but she's probably evolved a lot, you know, since going to college. What, what are the biggest changes you look back and see now that she, uh, how she evolved? I think it's more about my evolution, actually, Dan. <laughs> okay, let's hear about that. As she, what did she call me? A nervous, worried mom? Yeah, one of my favorite lines in the film, yeah. That, I think that about sums it up. And um, uh, I think that... Um, I had to take a deep breath, and that's my advice to other people, to take a deep breath and to trust, because something I always learned, heard as a parent was that we were supposed to teach our children to fly. Well, you can't teach somebody to fly if you're holding on to them. They're not gonna yeah. fly. Right. So I think that was the biggest thing that I had to, I had to learn was to, um, to trust that she was gonna be okay. Um, yeah. And um, I think that um, there, the changes in Fadia, she's always been a confident person. The only time I ever really have seen her nervous was the day she was um, interviewing for um, Temple. That was the most nervous I've ever seen her because she really? wanted so badly. Um, and um, uh, I've seen changes in her academic ability. She was in a life skills program at high school um, something I regret now, um, but that's, that's another film, I think, um, mm -hmm. that um, she has so much potential and um, the program it was a great high school and they're the ones who told me that we should apply to Temple. So I have nothing but love for them, but you know, she was in a very uh, segregated program um, and it focused on what she couldn't do rather than what she could do. And the Temple program doesn't do that. 
It focuses right. on all of the things that she can do um, and uh, gives her experiences that she wouldn't have had otherwise. It's a gift. It's a really, it's an unbelievable gift for both of us. Yeah. You know, somebody said to me once something that really resonated, which was in high school or even middle school, you're asked to show that you can do the things that you're not good at. And, and you're forced to try and do things you're not good at. In college, you get to focus on the things you actually are good at and love. <laughs> and it's not 100% true in all cases, but there's, there's some of that truth. There's some of that absolutely for all of us, I think, in school. That's the way that the, um, our system works. Um, but the, the inclusive mission of the Temple program is, um, is a real gift. And um, I think that um, everybody on the Temple campus benefits from this program. Yeah. We, and just lastly, before we open it up for everybody, um, are there things that weren't in the film that you think either Temple did particularly well to help Fudia? you know, adapt and, and grow there? Or are there things that you think universities need to do even better, you know, to help students succeed? Um, I think the, the focus on um, self-advocacy -advoc um, is a big focus in the program. And I think that that's great. Um, I think that um, just from a purely selfish standpoint, I could have used more scaffolding myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I would like to see maybe more of a um, caregivers group, um, people who've been through the program before to uh, work with parents because I really didn't have much support. Um, the program's fabulous and it was great for the kids, but I didn't know what I was trusting to let her right. So even like a Facebook group just for families, a closed Facebook group for families, something along those lines. Yeah, I did helpful. make some friends and there's uh, a new mom who um, I knew in high school and we um, talked back and forth, but I think that would have been helpful to me. Sure. Well, love getting to talk with you guys and get to know you a little bit. Stay here. And now we're going to have the rest of the panel. So it's going to be Curtis and his family and um, Adina and Janet, uh, turn your cameras and mics back on. Um, and we, sorry, well, uh, hold on, give me one second. I got to go get my sister real quick. <laughs> that's okay, Janet. You got it. So, all right. Well, let me uh, welcome back, uh, Curtis and Jeff and um, Peggy. Let me let me circle back to Curtis for a minute. There was a question. We're now taking questions from the audience. So there's a Q and A button on the bottom of the screen, and that's where you want to put any questions for the panel. Um, so, Curtis, somebody asked, what are the extracurricular activities that the students are pursuing, what you did? And I know you joined like a men's group. Your mom uh, referenced that quickly. Can you talk about what type of extracurricular stuff like that really was helpful or interesting to you? Yeah, so basically it was, we all met in the library every Friday night, just hanging out, uh, talk, like 30 guys just talk about like, college activities like study groups for the future um and then like we just it's a good time we play pool eat pancakes um just a overall good time and i love those guys i still i'm still in contact with some um yeah just thank thank you that i found that group what was the name of what was the name of the group? Millersville Concerned Men. So there was a bit of an underlying discussion around social issues or things like that as well. Yeah, just anything we could think of. That's great. Yeah, I remember you told me about that. How about you, Fudia? Did you join any clubs or anything that you got into when you were at Temple? Yeah, um, I joined the the Box of Balloon Club, and that was like helping um, to. Decorate um, like, a, like, a, like a party for kids, like decoration and stuff, making stuff for the, for the kids, for the birthday and stuff. And then they, they give to them since the, the kids are not, I can't have a birthday party, a celebration. So we make, we make a decoration of whatever, whatever thing they want. We did a call one for a six year old boy the last time. Nice. The garden, the garden club I'm into. Oh, the garden club. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was nice. fun. So you're taking care of the gardens around your house now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just at school. What did, what did you like about those clubs? What did it do for your experience at Temple? Um, the, um, just make it um, much fun and stuff. 
and because the, the like kids, the, the, the bullying, um, the bathroom was fun. Get up, get up, get up, get up, kids. They don't get up in celebration. Mm -hmm. Nice. So and you probably met, like Curtis said, you met people who you might not have met otherwise, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Janet and Nadine, are you guys there to join? Yes. You turn on your camera when you get a second. I don't think you're uh, oh, on the camera yet. This is, uh, okay, there yeah. it is. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Let me see you now. Um, Janet, how about you? Did you join any clubs or extracurricular activities um, at the Temple? Not much, but I did join like maybe the bowling club. I just haven't got to the bowl yet. So yeah, I did join the bowling club. Nice, the bowling club. Yeah. Do you think you'll do more of that when you go back, try and get involved in more things? Um, yes, I'll try to get more involved as I go along with clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. One thing I heard from Missy, by the way, Missy was hoping to join us today, but had some access to internet issues that, that prevented her. So we're sorry she couldn't join us. But I remember she said that she felt like she needed to get the academics under control first. And then she was feeling more comfortable doing the extracurricular stuff. Did you guys feel that at all? Or did you feel like you could jump into everything all at once? Um, I mean, at the time, like, do stuff at a time. Because then it would have been overwhelming if we tried to do stuff, like, all at once. So, yeah. What about you, Curtis? Did you feel like you had to wait? Oh, sorry, Dina. Go ahead. No, I just said she did pace herself pretty well with it. She kind of put her studies and everything first, and then she just went out a little more into the social world as far as like going to games and different things like that, but so she did put the academics first. Got it. How about you, Curtis? Did you feel like you had to get the academics down and then start to do other stuff? I, yeah, I feel like once I got my feet wet with the academics, everything else kind of tagged along. Nice. But Dee, let me ask you a different question. Um, somebody asked, what was the most important support for you there? Like, was it the coaches? Was it the person-centered planning group? Was it your teachers? Like, was there one thing that you think really helped out of everything make you feel successful there? Yes, it was the coaching. Helping have my homework and stuff, being around, telling me where, where to go and stuff to find the classes. That really helped a lot, the coaches. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, Curtis, did you feel like there was one thing particularly that really stands out as being the, a really critical support for you in college? I think um, the the coaches are definitely a big help. I was fortunate enough to go to school with um, my uh, family members were in the area that time around the Lancaster Millersville area. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Actually, there's one in particular. I think uh, going to my grandparents' house every Sunday night and watching Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune in that order definitely helped. <laughs> so having some family kind of close by was, was a good thing, too. Yeah. Nice. And the TV shows. How about you, Janet? Was there something, was it coaches or anything else that really helped you feel like you could manage college successfully? I would say coaches, friends, and family. Supported Coach me a lot. Friends. If you can see my sister <laughs> very much um close to me a lot and every time I had a problem I would come to my sister, of course. Um and just like sit there and talk to her about it to try to get her advice about it and she, you know, be like, you can do it. You know. Yeah. Nice. There's another question came in for the students. Um and it's an interesting one. It said, uh, when you meet people at college, do you prefer to tell them you have a disability? Or do you prefer to not tell them you have a disability? Um, ahead, I would Jess. say you can, I mean, you can tell them that you, it's not going to be a shame about that you have a disability because everybody has their own unique way. Um, in their own way, you're still unique um, and you're still normal just like any other person is. Um, so it's not really a shame or badness to tell people that you have intellectual disability is just the way of people might would judge or think mm -hmm. about you. Um, that's why people sometimes won't tell a disability problem or uh, how they feel about that disability need that they might have because they scared they might be judged all the way. Might be judged. Here right? that I have a disability, you know, is not something that you should be ashamed of. 
That's great. Well, very well said. Fadil, and let me ask you about that question. Did you feel like you wanted to tell people anything about any disability that you might identify yourself having or not? Um, no, not, not really, but I could have told, but I didn't, I didn't really tell any, any student about it. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you identify as having a disability? Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay, but you didn't feel the need to share that with anybody, just wanted them to get to know you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about you, Curtis? Did you um, share much about your disability or not? I, in my opinion, I think you should, but not right away. You know, you, you have to sort of scope out the person first. Like, you need to say, like, is this, is this a guy worth telling? Because, you know, some people could, like, take that for granted and totally like blow you off. So I say you should, but you should be cautious of who you share that information with because mm -hmm. they could not take you as seriously and get to know you and the connection won't be there. Got it. There's a question that came in that I think parents might be able to talk about is the cost of college. I mean, I've, I have a son who graduated from college, another one that's in college and you know, it can be very expensive. Do you feel like there were support systems that you could tap into for economic support grants or other things that help make college more affordable? So let me, Liz, let me start with you on that. Yes, we're very fortunate. Um, Fidia qualified for a waiver program um, as a disabled a person with an intellectual disability and um, it helps with the cost of college. She's also gotten some scholarships and some grants. Great. Curtis's parents, are you still there? Oh, were you gonna say something else, Liz, or no? I was just gonna say it's really important for people um, to look into that. Yeah. People, you know, I wouldn't have known about it unless somebody told me. I, because I first said, well, how could I afford to, to pay for this? And somebody told me about waivers. Great. How about Jeff and Peggy? Do you wanna share anything about that? I mean, really, we um, were blessed and didn't really have to worry a lot about that. But um, I think with what Liz was saying, it is very important to, to uh, self-advocate and find out what programs are out there. And um, I'm sure there's more. We weren't aware of any. Um, it was just our decision um, not to put Curtis on Medicaid um, mm -hmm. and, and take care of him ourselves without doing that. But that, that was just the path we, we decided to take. Sure. How about Janet and um, Adina? I don't know, can either one of you speak to that a little bit about the affordability of, of Temple? Yes, amazingly, she did qualify for the waiver program. There was another program that she was involved in. What was the name of it again? Uh, yeah, when she was um, involved in the SPARC program, they actually told us about Temple and how it could be paid, paid for. So we were like just totally on board for it. So if it was to, you know, give her a higher education, we were all for it. So fortunately, and she also did win. She won, I think, a small scholarship too for, for, for something I believe she, was it an essay that she had to write, I believe? Yes. Yeah, okay, it was an essay that she had to write. I believe those. So, you know, we were actually fortunate and blessed in that department. That's great. And I, from my knowledge of kind of the national network called Think College, which is the umbrella um, technical assistance center for all these different programs around the country. There are hundreds of them around the country that have access for students with intellectual disability. Um, it varies a lot. It varies a lot state to state. It varies a lot college to college in terms of what kind of funding is affordable. I know here in, Pen in Pennsylvania, where you guys are, um, Gabriella po posted some links in the chat for the Office of Developmental Programs, Vocational Rehabilitation, which in many, which part of their federal mission in many cases is to support students with disabilities for college. So definitely reach out to your local vocational rehabilitation office if you want to go to college and you have a disability. And then um, there's also information on the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium website, and that's all pasted into the chat. So there are, you, you do, as you said, you have to sometimes reach out, you know, and, and think about how to do this. Um, and it doesn't, and, and hopefully colleges are also providing that information to students. Um, so somebody had a question for Curtis specifically, what was the hardest part about applying for Millersville, just applying for the college? Honestly, the, um, the trade school out of that, um, up in 
Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where I was currently residing before I applied. Um, the library didn't have that good Wi-Fi, so that was mainly the <laughs> okay. but luckily I was able to get it off and I was praising that I got out of it. <laughs> and let me, there's another question that came up that I can help answer and then and Marie may want to jump in later. People are asking about students with um, very significant disabilities, you know, what are the college access opportunities? And I could speak to that a little bit from personal experience with my son Samuel has not an intellectual disability, but a very significant physical disability. And we work very closely with the accessibility office at his community college, which might be called disability student services or accessibility services. And it's really important to have to develop a very strong, reasonable accommodations plan, which is kind of like the IEP from high school. It turns into something called a reasonable accommodations plan for college. And that um, within the legal structures of college allows you to have the supports and accommodations. Now, it doesn't include the kind of modifications you might have had in high school. So it doesn't mean you're going to have to you're going to be able to skip writing papers or things. It's still very challenging. But I would say that a lot of colleges have very strong accessibility offices. Some colleges don't have very strong accessibility offices. So I would look into that for sure before choosing a college. You know, um, and, and again, think college is specifically funded to support students who have um, in their records, you know, the label of intellectual disability. Without that, it's, it's not a typical pathway to go, go through one of the think college networks. Um, let, people want to know, do we have time for just maybe one or two more questions? People want to know the students, what are your future plans, you know, beyond college? So Curtis, you talked a little bit already about your work, your current work, but let me just jump to you first. Are you thinking longer term, what, what you want to be doing in terms of where you live, your work? Yes, I do. Um, I, so my um, summer job working at w Wisconsin, um, just kind of reinforce my passion for helping people and uh, let them succeed. So I see myself as a paraprofessional for like a school district, um, probably in the Lancaster area, because that's a good area. I love that area. I love going. Um, just helping kids and my mom's a coach and I'm a mama's boy and I adopted <laughs> that coaching aspect and I I love watching people succeed. Nice. That's awesome. I love that path. That sounds exciting. Pudia, what about you? Do you start thinking about what you want to do, where if you want to where you want to live and what kind of work you might want to do in the future? Um, I still want to continue doing childcare still. Um and but I I want to live in my own place um independently yeah mm -hmm. and you said in the film that you you want to hopefully get married and have kids yeah. someday and all that's mm -hmm. that's really cool yeah. great that you have what's that i do want to get married someday nice mm -hmm. wonderful goals so yeah she looked at me <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have a mom whether you like it or not right <laughs> Um, and then how about you, Jen? We got a guy for you here. What's that, Jeff? I said, we got a guy for you here. <laughs> no. This is not I'd The Bachelor. Okay this is not The Bachelor. This is not Love is Blind, any of those shows. <laughs> um, Janet, what about you? What are you thinking for um, for your future schooling and life? Working, maybe get married, um, have a kid someday. Nice. I love working. it. Do you know what kind of work you might want to do? Um, well, since I love working with kids and I already work with kids, <laughs> I'm working with kids. Yeah. Nice. Well, before I hand back off to Anne Marie, let me get the parents in the frame again. I want to get you guys visually here. And I, uh, Curtis, you too. You can stick around. Parents and students. For two reasons. One is that I got to get a selfie here, a shot of everybody. All right, smile. <laughs> Got, all right, one, two, three, go. Nice. All right, we got our picture. Now, the other thing is, I do want to ask the parents, um, somebody asked the question, what can we do, you know, if someone has an eight-year-old child, and what can they do to get their parents, and Adina, you as well, as a sister, what can we do to help keep our kids on a path 
to eventually go to college? If our child has a disability, what, what can we do to keep them on this kind of path? Um, Peggy, you're nodding. Do you want to start? Yeah. yeah um, you know, we were in a very good school district, but I just felt like I, I met with the teachers right at the beginning of school and various times throughout the year, but I told them, don't dummy down anything for, for Kurt. Um, and they did. And I just had to constantly remind them, I'd rather him get a C or a D on his own or these A's or B's that he seems to be coming up with um, for, you know, vocabulary. They give him five words a week to learn versus the 25 everybody else was trying to learn. Like, you've, you've got to believe and you've got to give the teachers the ability to teach. Um, because if, if they're setting a ceiling what too, or a bar too low for your kid, you know, that's, that's when you just got to push and just keep pushing so they're ready by the time they get to college. Nice. Opinion. Excellent. Excellent. Jeff, did you want to add anything on to that? Yeah, just keep the expectations high for your child and for, you know, the schools and teachers where they're going. Um, yeah, don't, you know, don't take the path of least resistance. Nice. Let me jump to Adina and then I'll come to Liz. Adina, do you have anything that you think you could say to these parents of young kids or siblings of young kids? Yes, I am 100% uh, on board with Curtis's parents because not just with Janet, I also have two grandchildren who have autistic spectrum disorder and one of them is a seven year old. And if um, when you deal with children with disabilities, I believe like to start very early once it's diagnosed or once you start noticing things, to get them the best help, the best education, the best speech therapy, anything that's available to help them flourish and develop as forthcoming as they, as much as they possibly can. Because my example, my seven seven year old grandson, he's on his way to the second grade and he's not in in learning dis disabled class or anything, and he's a straight A student. So even with Janet, who's done excellent going to Temple University. You know, just to, hey, the sky doesn't even have to be the limit. You can go above and beyond. And this is why I try to support her as much as I can, give her the peace that she needs for studying, and, and constantly be encouraging. Nice. Constantly Very. be encouraging. Very well said. Thank you, Adina. That was beautifully said. Um, Liz, thoughts on that same topic? I don't think there's much to add. I think that um, everybody covered it quite well. High expectations outside of classroom as well as inside the classroom, expose them to all sorts of things in the world. Um, I think that I could have done a better job pushing the school, but thankfully they saw the shining star that she was. Um, and uh, I, I don't think I have much else to add. Yeah, well, I'll, then I'll just add a couple of quick thoughts in addition to the great things you all just said. You know, as a parent of Sam Mill and as a parent of a child with disability and somebody who's had the chance to go around the country and film in schools and do a lot of research, um, it's really clear, as you kind of alluded to, Liz, that inclusive education results in better outcomes. Kids with disabilities who, who are encouraged and supported by their schools to be learning alongside their peers, learning the general education curriculum, as Peggy was saying, with high expectations, they are statistically much more likely to have better outcomes when it comes to education, higher education, behavior, their social lives, their communication, employment, across the board. I mean, there's absolutely no, it should not be an argument anymore that schools should be pushing for this. And Liz, it sounds like you tried, but maybe didn't get the kind of encouragement from the school that, that maybe some others get to say, no, we think your child could succeed in a regular classroom. Um, and then, you know, I would also say that if we, if we as parents need to continue to advocate for that, even when our kids are out of school, you know, advocate in our communities, in our local communities for inclusive education. Um, because we know that if you, if you have inclusion, you're also more likely to get a high school diploma. And I think that's the other thing is really fighting to keep your kids on a regular high school diploma track. There are gonna be junctures where your people in your school might say, well, let's have them do the alternative assessment or let's have them do a portfolio approach instead of staying on that regular diploma track. And I would encourage parents to resist, really understand what that means. Because when you start going on these alternate tracks, a lot of parents don't realize that means they're not gonna be eligible for a regular high school diploma. 
And once you get a regular diploma, a lot of opportunities open up, whether that's college, employment, the military, you know, whatever, wherever your path takes you. So we probably need to wrap up the panel portion. You guys were awesome. It was so good being with you again virtually. Yeah. And hopefully thank we'll you. see you again in real life. And thank you for being a part of the film. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll see you soon. We're going to bring a Dean. We're going to bring Anne Marie back on for some closing comments. Thanks, Curtis and Padilla and Janet. Thank you all so much, and and, and your families. So we can turn your cameras off. You. We're going to bring Anne Marie back on. Great, Thanks. Anne Marie. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to um, go ahead and share the screen for you, Anne Marie. Perfect. To, Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dan, and to um, the families that could be with us, and Curtis and Janet and Fadia. Um, there's not a lot that I can say that you haven't covered and the great responses and the participants that were here today. Um, you know, I can only echo what you said, Dan. Um, I too am a parent of children um, who qualify for these programs. And I understand the fight that is necessary to keep our kids in an inclusive environment. Um, so with great fidelity, we have um, implemented our TIPS and grant. Um, this is the fifth year of it, and we're just really proud of the efforts that we've made to have more programs within our state that align with this level of inclusion. And on the, on the website, or on the, on the screen for you right now, um, you can see our website, pihec.com, um, and um, a lot of resources are there. Uh, for you. Um, our friends at Think College, I know Claire is here, Claire Pepe from Think College is here, and um, that also is a wealth of resources. There are a lot of programs across the country that are open. I think last count, uh, 280 maybe, um, and I will tell you that not all of them are the level of inclusion that you saw here in the screening. So we have really been pushing for the very highest level here within our state during um, our TIPSID implementation. Um, Millersville University, if you want to find any of my friends um, that I work with here, um, Dr. Thomas Newville started the program. Um, Jan Bechtel is the uh, infamous director now of the program and um, does an awesome job. You can learn more about that. And then our friends at Temple University, um, Leadership and Career Studies, um, they um, are also a four-year program. Um, not all the programs within the consortium are four years. Some of them are two years. Um, some of them have the option of two year and four year. Um, but I'm just so happy that so many of you could come today and share with us. Thanks to the dignitaries at Millersville that could join us, Dr. Prabhu and um, our president, uh, Dr. Wuba, um, to um, all of you uh, for coming. And um, with that, I think, Dan, I think we're ready to wrap it up. Oh, and let me say happy celebratory Juneteenth to everyone. Uh, I'm so glad you uh, chose us to join um, today and spend your um, last two hours with. So thanks so much. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. I'll just close. Thank you, Emery, for those great comments. I'll, I'll just close by making sure people know that the film is now live to be seen at openingdoorstocollege.com. Um, and, and the film, as far as I know, can be streamed and also may, I think will be downloadable also from there. This, this film is intended to be used freely and publicly and internationally by anyone that wants to watch it. And as you saw today, the film was created with maximum accessibility in mind. So it's both captioned and audio described. Um, and again, I mean, I, I wanna just emphasize two things in closing. One is first of all, thanking Millersville and the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium and, and Temple University for participating, not only participating in the film as subjects, but for funding the film and for making a commitment to seeing documentary film as the vision that um, can communicate what's going on in these incredible uh, colleges. Thomas uh, called, Thomas Newville called me probably three years ago, and I still remember getting that call saying, we've got some funding and we'd like, to, we'd like you to make a film about the great work that's happening here and at Temple and in many other colleges around the country. So I'm so grateful to have had that opportunity. Um, and I think, I hope what comes through clearly in the film is something I talked about earlier, that on this day that is Juneteenth, a really important holiday, we're seeing this as part of overall efforts to create you know, equity, access, uh, advanced racial justice, advanced disability rights, you know, this can't happen just in any one pocket of society. It needs to happen across all aspects of society. And, and it's, you can't just talk about inclusion, you have to live it. You have to have the experience, both the students with and without disabilities. And that's what I think we saw happening in such beautiful ways at Temple and at Millersville University. 
So with that, um, so thankful you all could join us. We will be sending out a recording of this webinar um, probably in about a week, a week to two weeks. We'll be able to email you all and you'll get an email with the recording so you could share it with your colleagues and friends and family members. So thanks for being here today and looking forward to staying in touch with everybody. Enjoy your summers and please stay healthy and well. Bye-bye.